Sometimes we need to be reminded of, of where we came from, of our, of our roots, and it can just be so important. It can be uh, just gr- a great reminder. I um, last weekend had the opportunity to go back to, and, and, and uh, you might think this is kind of a little whatever, but it, for me it was, it was kind of a, a neat moment. I had an opportunity to go back to, and, and hunt at a place where I hadn't hunted since I was, I, don't, I think, like 12 years old, something like that. 13 maybe, um, and I took Gavin, who is 13, with me, and, and my dad was there, and brother-in-laws, and, and my cousin was there, and, and it was just kind of this neat, sentimental moment uh, where I kind of went back to a place I, I hadn't been in 30 plus years, and, and it was really neat, and, and it just kind of just resonated with me, and I had a good time, and um, it was just a neat moment. You know, I, I think that as followers of Christ, we kind of need to go back in our minds and remember where we came from and, and importantly remember, even as we just sang about, right, the foundation that we have in Christ and, and what that means for us. You know, every time we hear a, a baptism story, it connects with us. Why? Because we think back to where God has brought us from, right? Out of darkness and into light. And by the way, we have two more baptisms this morning at the end of the second service. Um, that's three out of the last four Sundays, right? Uh, that's pretty awesome stuff. Uh, and I hope that you know, we never take that for granted, just being able to celebrate a changed life. You know, every time we take communion, um, we, we take it and we do it in remembrance of Christ and in remembrance of the sacrifice that he's made for us at the cross. Well, this morning we're going to be talking about the importance of remembering what we have known from the beginning, going back to the beginning, and just remembering our roots, that foundation in Christ, and and thinking back to the early days of salvation, because those fundamental truths guard us and guide us as we follow the Savior and as we look for His return. 1 John chapter 2 this morning. 1 John chapter 2, it's kind of an interesting text. And uh, I want to invite you to turn there, and, and we're going to work our way through this. And I kind of have some, some just different thoughts regarding some of this, but I think it's just very um, timely in terms of, of all that's going on in our world today. Remember, John is constantly working to help Christians know for sure that they have eternal life, right? First John 5.13, it's, it's really the purpose statement of the book of 1 John. He says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. Right? You have salvation in Christ, right? That you may know that you have eternal life. And the same is true that we're going to see in this text this morning. This text in 1 John chapter 2 is also kind of coupled with that same thought. So with that in mind, take a look at our text. Starting in verse 18, it says this, 1 John 2, 18. Children, it's the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might be plain that they all are not of us. At first, this might seem a little bit confusing. I really don't think it's that confusing of a text. He starts out, children, it's the last hour, and you've heard that the Antichrist is coming. Since the ascension of Jesus Christ, right? He died on the cross, rose again three days later, was with his disciples, appeared to over 500 witnesses at one time, right? And returned to heaven, ascended back into heaven. And ever since that moment, the stage has been set for the return of Christ. And the readers that John originally wrote to, and including us today, we all know, they knew that The predicted Antichrist was going to come. But what John is also doing here is he's alerting them that there are many who are Antichrist, just simply put, against Christ that are here today. They were there when John was writing to them, hey, beware, there's a bunch who are against Christ, they're Antichrist, and the same is true today. Just take one look into the news or look at the last couple of decades in our nation, you quickly realize that there are many anti-Christs, right? There are many who are against Christ. 
um, our, our nation has become more and more against Christ in recent years. Whether it's Supreme Court decisions regarding marriage, whether it's political leaders pushing for anti-biblical agendas, whether it's as many as 2,000 babies a day who are aborted per day, or places of worship being attacked, it's clear that the United States of America is increasingly against Christ. Like we, we just got to look at what's going on in the world, right? The, the level of evil and wickedness that is taking place and that's it's almost recognized as normal, right? It's almost just like, well, I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's just, that's just the world we live in. No, listen, it's not okay, all right? It's not okay. Um, we we are, are seeing in Israel and, and what Hamas is doing in the Gaza Strip and in Israel, it's, it's purely evil. Um, and by the way, don't buy into the nonsense that this is somehow benefiting the Palestinians. The Palestinians that live in the Gaza Strip don't want Hamas there. They don't want them there. They're not helping them. They're destroying uh, their homes, their businesses. This is about Hamas, who is backed by Iran, and it's entertaining a level of evil and wickedness that we could argue uh, goes back to Genesis chapter 6, pre-flood. Right? Genesis chapter 6. Just look at this really quickly for a minute. The Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. It's a level of wickedness that was so bad that God said, i got to start over again. I had to flood the earth and start over with one man and his family. Take a look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 11. It says this, Now the earth was corrupt in God's sight, and the earth was filled with violence. Now, this, this might grab your attention, and I hope it does if you haven't heard this yet. The Old Testament was written in, in Hebrew, right? That word for violence is the Hebrew word Hamas. So, so when we take a look and recognize what's going on in Israel and what's going on with, with Hamas, it's pure evil and it's a level of evil that they knowingly right, recognize as absolutely awful. In fact, this word for violence, it, it, it's like next level kind of stuff. And, and with kids in the room, I, I want to be a little careful here, but if you watch and see a little bit or hear a little bit about what's going on, the level of violence that's going on is next level Genesis 6 kind of stuff. There are many anti-Christs. Those who are against Christ. Uh, just the idea of Hamas in that word, right? I just want to define that word. If you were to study this word out, it's behavior involving physical force intended to hurt, damage, or kill. It's an extreme word, which is why we're seeing extreme violence, murder, young and old, rape. It's absolutely awful. And listen, this group isn't out to help anyone. They're out to kill and to kill anybody who gets in their way. And their name alone tells the story. It's no wonder why God had to flood the earth, right? One of the things you'll hear Hamas shouting is Allah Akbar. And, and some translate it, God is great. Allah Akbar, right? As they go through and as they do this wickedness, they're shouting this phrase, uh, God is great. Maybe a better translation would be our God is greater. And it's a statement that's Truly against the God of, of the Bible. And, and so when we take a look at what's taking place around the world, we live in a world that's increasingly against Christ. Recognize that. And, and, I, and I don't know what you hear on the news. I don't know all of what it's communicating. But I know what this word means, Hamas. I know what this group stands for. And it's against God. It's against Christ. And we live in a world that is increasingly evil and wicked, and we live in a world in which as we watch the things taking place around us, we ought to have our heads looking up. We ought to be ready, because I think the day is coming when Christ is going to return.
Take a look at, at verse 18 and 19 again. Children, it's the last hour. You've heard that the Antichrist is coming. He's, he's coming. The stage is set, right? But now many Antichrists have come. Many who are against Christ have come. Therefore, we know that it's the last hour. But then notice what he says in verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they'd been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might be complained that they are all that they all are not of us. John's making it clear that there's false teachers. There are those who are against Christ. Some who've come right out of the church. Listen to what Bible Knowledge Commentary has to say. Heresy in the Christian church, whether on the part of its saved members or unsaved people in it, always unmasks a fundamental disharmony with the spirit and doctrine of the apostles. A man in touch with God will submit to biblical instruction. Listen, this is why it's so critical for each of us to be grounded in the truth and to go back to the beginning to remember the foundation that we have in Jesus Christ. That we were saved by grace through faith and what Christ did for us at the cross. Because from time to time, people with seemingly good intentions pop up even within the church and begin to spread discord and disunity. And a lot of it comes down to false teaching. They tend to be those who come across as having great knowledge and insight. But over time, the truth comes out. And I want to emphasize that. Over time, the truth comes out. And these types of individuals reveal who they really are. They show their true color. Sometimes it takes years. They won't submit to biblical instruction. They won't submit to leadership. And at the core, it's often rooted in pride. And here's the thing. At first glance, it's not always obvious. I've seen, I've seen this happen before, right? It all seems good, but over time, they tend to bring more disunity, more th than harmony. And if you've been on the receiving end of this, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You've seen this and you know it now because you've witnessed it. Listen, it, it will come out, maybe not now, maybe not until eternity, but the truth will be revealed. And now notice the difference, right? You have those who, who are clearly against Christ, some even within the church, they, they make it sound all good, but really what they are doing is not of the Lord. They're not falling under teaching uh, that, that is of, of, of the church, of leadership, of the Spirit. But then notice what it says in verse 20. But you have been anointed by the Holy One. And you all have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. And because no lie is of the truth. Who is the liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ. This is the Antichrist. He who denies the Father and the Son. Listen, you've been anointed. Now, I, I want to make it really clear. Right? Some might take this, this verse and, and we make it way more than it is. This is a very simple verse. You've been anointed by the Holy Spirit. It's simply that moment when we come to Christ, place our salvation in Jesus Christ as Lord, and His Spirit indwells inside of us. It's not referring to some special anointing, if you will, that Christians may or may not have. Uh, it, this is simply pointing to that moment when Christ comes into our life and, and, and God's Spirit dwells inside of us. It takes residence with us, and then we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And John says, you know what? I'm writing this to you, not because you do not know the truth. You know it! You know it. Stick to it. Stick to what you know is true and because no lie is of the truth. And who's the one who's really the liar? Is the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ. He's the one who's really against Christ. Is the one who denies the Father and the Son. Listen. We know it. Right? He says, I write to you because you do... Not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it. We know it because we know the truth. Uh, because we have the knowledge of Scripture. Because we have His Spirit within us. And the one who denies Christ is against the Father, is opposed to the Son. They are the liars, and, and they are the ones who do not recognize that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Take a look at verse 23. It's a long text. I've got to, got to move quickly through it here this morning. But no one who denies the Father has the Son. Whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. Notice they go hand in hand, right? 
Notice how John did that. No one denies the, fa- the Son has a Father. Like, you, you've got to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, as the one who died on the cross to pay for our sins, right? And he's the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father but by him. No one who denies the Son has the Father. You, you don't have eternal life, right? But whoever confesses the Son has the Father also. If you deny one, you deny all. Father, Son, Spirit, right? And then he says this in verse 24. And I think this is really, really important. Verse 24 and 25. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. Come back to that solid doctrine and teaching that you sat under, that you know to be true. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you too will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise he's made to us, eternal life. See what John's doing here? Right? really connects with chapter 5, verse 13, the whole purpose of the book. He's, he's like, listen, don't fall under this antichrist, many of them who are going to come, some even within the church. Don't believe what they're saying. Don't fall under their lies in their teaching, stick to what you heard from the beginning. Let that abide in you. Well, what is it that abides in us? It's the gospel of Jesus who is the Christ, the Savior of the world. As I thought about going back to the beginning, I thought about, you know, if you grew up in the church, you could probably sing some children's ministry songs, right? Right? I think sometimes when we think about going back to the beginning, it's not a bad thing to go back to the B-I-B-L-E-S. That's the book for me. I stand alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. I think sometimes we got to go back to the verse that's probably known by more people than anybody else, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Let's go back to this. Let's go back to what we know is true, that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Let's go back to these fundamental truths and let's stick to our roots. It, it, it seems to me, and, and maybe I'm, I'm a little off with this, I don't think I am, but it seems to me that false teachers are on the rise. Heresy is, is on the rise. And some come right from solid churches. Uh, some have grown up in the faith and they've been taught fundamental truths, but then somehow get up, caught up in false teaching. Listen, we've got to be careful to stick to the foundation. I, I want to give you a couple of comments that ought to throw up some red flags in your mind, right? You, you ever hear some things like this? It ought to be like instant red, red flag. Now, now listen, we want to be careful to hear things out. And we want to be careful to understand what's being communicated. But here's a couple of of, of red flags for you. I'm rethinking everything I know. When I hear that, it's like, that does not sound good. Well, there's a new theology out there. Uh, there, There's a new revelation. There's a, a new word from the Lord about fill in the blank. Listen, there's nothing new under the sun we got to stick to the roots of the doctrine of Jesus Christ and understand what the Word is teaching us. We need to stop listening to these crazy posts out there that have this new profound theology and teaching. And here's the thing. It usually sounds good. Right? you got people who are phenomenal communicators out there. Like, they're just very good and very convincing, and it sounds like, oh man, I never realized that before. Listen, John warns us, and I think sometimes we think, well, I mean, that's not me, I don't need to, yes, you do need to be careful, and yes, you do need to be on guard. All of us need to be on guard. Why? Because they went out from us. Now, they're not of us, for they'd been with us, they'd continue with us, but they went out. And what they're doing is teaching what we talked about a couple years ago when we did a series called Twisted Truths. And oftentimes they take verses from the Bible and they twist them to form a theology that they would like to believe in that's not taught within the Bible. A couple 
years ago when we, did, when we did that series, Twisted Truths, part of the reason we did it was to help people understand the importance of, of hermeneutics. And you're like, what did you just say? Right, it's a big fancy word for knowing how to properly study the Bible so that we don't draw conclusions that we want to draw or that necessarily fit into what we'd like to believe, but that we draw accurate conclusions based on the context, context of which it is written in. Listen to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is, the judge, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with complete patience and teaching. Why? Why, Paul? Here's why. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they'll accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And can we add in the word theology? And will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. Hebrews chapter 2 says this in verse 1, Therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. Listen, we've got to study God's Word. We need to go back to those fundamental truths that we know. One of the core values of our church is the Word of God. Therefore, we seek to know, live, and proclaim the Gospel. We've got to play, pay close attention to the teaching of God's Word so we don't drift away. I want to give you just a few more passages. I, I just want you to listen to this. Like, this is one of the major emphasis of the New Testament is to watch out. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. People will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, un, un, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good. Sound familiar? Treacherous, reckless, Swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. I mean, Paul is strong with this. For among them are those who creep into households, capture weak women, burn them with sin, and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of the truth. Like, these people make it sound good. Romans chapter 16, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who, have, who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. Second time Paul said that. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery they deceive the hearts of the naive. For your obedience is known to all, so that I rejoice over you, but I want you to be wise as to what is good and innocent, as to what is evil. Church, we got to be on guard. And I think sometimes we get in our minds, it's like, oh no, it's, it's, our, it's our, you know, little church. We, we know everybody here, we know. Listen, we've got to be on guard. And we live in a world that is increasingly anti-Christ, that is increasingly evil, that is increasingly full of false teaching and heresy that points against what the truth of the Word of God is communicating. And the enemy wants to bring this right into the church, and he'd love to do this in, in the area of teaching and doctrine more than any other else. Verse 26 says this. He says, I write these things to you about those who are trying to deceive you. I mean, John, John's making it clear here. But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. God's spirit abides in you. And you have no need that anyone should teach you. You don't, you don't have to go outside the church. You don't have to go to these other sources, right? We have God's spirit. We have God's word. And as, but as his anointing teaches you about everything and is true and is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. We've, we've got to go back to the beginning. We've got to stick to the truth of the word of God. 
Jesus says this in John 16, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He'll speak. He'll declare to you the things that are to come. He'll glorify Me, for He will take what is Mine and declare it to you. Listen, we have God's Spirit who's within us, who indwells within us, who's impressing upon our hearts and our minds the importance of the Word of God that we need to fall under, that we need to know. And as followers of Jesus, we need to go back to the beginning time and time and time and time again to what we have known from the early days of our salvation in Christ. Because those foundational truths guard us and guide us as we follow Christ and as we look forward to His return. Um, maybe you're thinking this morning, man, Pastor Ben, you seem a little passionate about this. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I, it's just so sad to see people caught in something that sounds good and in, in is communicated maybe really, really well. And on the outside, it's, it's beautiful. I mean, it's like a decorated cake. It's just all put together. But on the inside, it's garbage. And it's terrible for you. Listen, we've got to stick to the truth of the Word of God, church. And we've got to stick to what the Spirit impresses upon our hearts as we study the Word. Listen, if, if you're going around trying to, oh, yeah, well, you know, I feel like God's Spirit's working in me this way, and you're not in the Word, Probably the bad something you ate last night, okay? All right? You got to be in the Word. You got to study it. You got to know the truths of it. Why? Because many antichrists have come. Now. So now many antichrists have come. If, if anything this morning, this, I just want you to hear like warning signs flashing on and off in your minds. I want you to hear the truths of these passages that John gives us, that, that Paul gives all throughout his epistles, that time and time again he warns to watch out, to be on guard, to avoid the types of individuals that cause division, that teach truths contrary to the Word of God. We have to stick to this. And all the more as we see the day of Christ coming. You know, the last couple of weeks here, I said this, this morning we've got, this is the third out of the last four Sundays that we've, we've had baptism. I, I want to encourage you, pray for these new believers. If you don't know their names, come to one of us, we'll, we'll give you their names. Write their names down, pray for them. Uh, this morning we, we have a, a young man that's, um, that's being baptized, that he hasn't been with us very long. He got saved down south and moved. He's from this area, moved back here, but he's getting ready to go into the military. And he said, you know, I, I want to I take this next step. I, kn I know I need to do this. I know I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I need to go public with my faith. Uh, and I want to do this in the next couple weeks because I'm, I'm headed into the military. And I, that's fantastic, right? Awesome story. We need to pray for individuals like this. We need to pray for them and we need to pray that God's Spirit and that His heavenly host would watch over them and guard them, protect them. We need to pray that they would have their spiritual armor on more than anything else. We, got, we have one of our students from our Christian school that's being baptized this morning. We, we, we need to pray for these individuals. We need to pray for these believers that for the most part are, are new in their faith and we need to pray for them. We need to pray and to watch over them and guard and protect them and protect one another, protect the flock that is here. Well, in the book of, of Jude, he, he writes this. It's, the, it's the, the very last letter before the book of Revelation. And really, the 
the main theme of the book of Jude is to contend for the faith. And that's what we need to be about. We need to be a church that, that contends for the faith, that, that is about proclaiming it and declaring it and sticking to the foundation of what we know. Not wandering off into new ideas and new myths, but sticking to the truth of the Word of God. Jude writes at the end of it, and he gives this um, doxology, if you will. He says, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling. That's what we're looking for, right? We don't want to stumble. We want to stick to the truth of, of the Word of God. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling. And to present you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. And all God's people said, Amen. Lord, we come before You this morning. And God, we ask and pray that Your Word and Your Spirit would guard us and guide us. That You would guard us from false teaching, from false teachers. That You would protect us from division and dissension. That You would protect Your church, protect Your flock from those who seek to destroy Lord, we ask and pray, God, that You would be with these individuals that have been baptized recently and are going to be baptized today. God, protect them. I pray for this young man, Aaron, as, as he goes off into the Air Force. God, protect him. God, provide him with brothers and sisters in Christ. Put him in a, in a location where he's able to be under solid teaching. That he continue to grow in the truth of the Word of God. And Lord, we await the coming of Your Son, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, our Lord and Savior. And in these days ahead, Lord, help us to live our lives with a sense of urgency, urgency to proclaim Your truth, to share the light of the Gospel in this dark world. We ask and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.